everybody, Dan Ullman, Ashley Mayu, taking a look at the DRF race of the day for Saturday, February the 17th. It's race number eight at Laurel Park. It's the grade three Barbara Fritchie. Some nice fillies and mares going seven eighths of a mile. Let's take a look at this field. We've got nine in here, including two trained by Safi Joseph coming up from Gulfstream Park. Bluefield sure ran well last time out in a graded stakes race down there. An intrepid daydream. Well, we know what she could do at Laurel Park. She was the scourge of the local division for a while when trained by Gary Capuano. Yeah, this is a really nice field, Dan. You know, you've talked about both of Safi Joseph Jr.'s runners coming out of the inside information, but can't forget about horses like Last Leaf, who has been in some really difficult spots throughout her career. We talk about her. Um, she raced to Keeneland in the grade two, just four starts ago, a nice third place separate from her. And she hasn't been to the winner's circle in some time, which I think is why people are cautious of her. But you cannot forget she loves the 7 ace distance, and she certainly loves the dirt after those two synthetic performances last time out. But even some other horses, Apple Picker, to me, has had a little bit of trouble on those last two. You wonder if she'll come around as well. So excited to see this year's edition of this race. And you have the speedy Disco Ebo, who's won half of her 20 lifetime starts, and she's expected to make the running in the early stages of the Barbara Fritchie. Intrepid Daydream is a very tactical horse. She can work out a good trip. Horses like Continental Congress, Beneath the Stars, they're stepping up in class. It'll be interesting to see if this pace is a little bit stronger than what they're used to. I think it could be. I certainly think the pace, just with this field and kind of the quality that we have and just the running styles, a lot of these horses want to be pretty forward, not necessarily on the lead, but you wonder even if a horse such as Disco Evo gets the lone lead, how many horses could be right off of her? And you see mainly two here. I think it could be two or three or four, to be honest. I think there's going to be a, a tight flight right behind the likely pace setter. And you mentioned Last Leaf, Ashley. She is so contest consistent. It doesn't matter the surface. She's hit the board in her last eight starts, whether it's dirt turf or synth. She's done it in graded stakes races. And don't be fooled by her getting beat last time out in an allowance race at Turfway. The fourth place finisher of that race came back to win the wishing well there with a 94 buyer. That was a stakes quality field. Yeah, a very, very strong field last time out. And you just wonder, I mean, Hey, she raced well. Does she prefer that surface over the dirt? I'm not sure. And I just remember her ever since her debut at Gulfstream Park when I was down there. She is really gritty. She's very fast. I don't know if she's as fast as some others in here, but um, look at the role that she had in 2022. It hasn't been the same since then, but she's been in some tough spots. And I think for her, um, not that her last two were stakes, but this is a field that certainly within her reach, she has the capability to win a race like this. The number two is Prodigy Doll trainer Phil Schoenfeld trying to improve on this one's fifth place finish in the last two editions of the Barbara Fritchie. Now she's coming into this race in good form off of a victory and a high level allowance on a wet track. Now, while the buyer came back light, Ashley, this track I thought was really playing to horses that were racing on the rail. And Prodigy Doll was at least two, three paths off the rail for most of the way. She overcame the bias. So maybe we can give her some extra points. I think you can. And I still think, you know, you look at her, she's capable of bigger buyers. So even when I see a buyer that you think, oh, that's a little light, sometimes they don't read into it too much, especially with conditions like that. And you've kind of talked about the rail there and she was further off the rail. And you think with sitting water and that was a pretty sloppy racetrack, I wouldn't necessarily want to be on the rail if there even was a bias necessarily. So uh, I thought it was a good performance from her. Nice to see her back in the winner's circle because she had a pretty long losing streak before that. And you wonder, did the track help her chances? Because she does like an off track, but you know, for her, I think we've, you know, talked about last leaf and when we went over the field as a whole, she might be just mid pack early on, just waiting for some action in front of her to unfold, to make that late run. And maybe the seven eighths distance allows her to do so. One of the bigger prices in this year's edition of the Barbara Fritchie is the three, Freccia D'Argento, but she is repeating the route to sprint move that resulted in an 18 to one upset in a first level allowance at Laurel back in October. Her most recent start was okay. She was no match for the favorite charming way. And keep in mind, she was entered for the $40,000 tag. This is a good performance from her. I just don't know if a performance like this is going to put her in the winner's circle against this group. I think you look at her, you could have claimed her down the page last year for 30000 when she was previously trained by Jamie Ness. And she's, races, she's a consistent type and she picks up checks. But to me, these waters are really deep and we've only started to go through the field. And I think to me, the other two to her inside are already a little bit more appealing. I just don't know, even though the cutbacks worked for her in the past, to me, they've been pretty 
strong about keeping her at a mile or a mile and a 16th in a lot of those starts. So I do have some reservations. Trainer Butch Reed's been a mainstay for a long time in the Mid-Atlantic area, and he's been doing very, very well everywhere, whether it's Parks, whether it's Laurel, whether it's with Uncle Heavy up in New York preparing for a start in the upcoming Wood Memorial. Here's Disco Ebo's most recent start in an allowance race going six and a half furlongs. As you can see, or as you can't see, uh, it's a foggy track. Disco Ebo was involved in a speed duel. She likes to win races. She's won half of her 20 lifetime starts, and you're going to know her early. Yeah, you are. And the big thing for her is seven ace. We see her at the six and a half furlong. She's almost going to get caught here. She doesn't, though, and holds on for the win. And even last time when you go three starts back, she raced at seven ace. She was able to do the same thing. She was able to get the job done because for a horse that has that nat natural gait speed, the concern becomes, does she go too fast early? Does she have competition? Can she get a piece? Uh, she's talented. She's hard to not use, at least in the exotics in a race like this, but she could either kind of work against herself or the other horses in here might pressure her going a little bit longer. Apple Picker, the number five, has been knocking on the door in recent starts, and she still has some upside compared with some of the others. Let's watch her most recent start, the Willa on the Move. She's chasing a quality New York Invader headland, and you're going to see right here she's going to get bounced around at the 316th pole, and she lost her stride for a, a couple of strides. I'm not sure she's winning the race with the cleanest trip because headland's pretty good, but it affected her. Do you feel like, I mean, at least I feel this way, Dan, she gets just herself into a little bit of trouble each start. We saw it here, two starts back, Reiner lost the whip, three starts back, I think she got bounced around, and she's very consistent, and she's, you know, she's trying, she's still fairly young compared to some others in here, and I think you said it, she does have some upside, but you have to wonder, when is she going to get out of trouble and when is she able to, you know, going to be able, I should say, to take that big step forward? This might be a tough spot for her. But again, another one that I think you can look at in here and say maybe she can be in the top three, maybe in the top four here. And this, uh, hopefully she can learn a little bit more and going back to seven ace helps her as well. Intrepid Daydream won four consecutive races in the Mid-Atlantic, three in the Maryland, two at Laurel before being privately purchased and sent down to South Florida for Safi Joseph. And she ran quite well in her first start down there for Safi. That was the Sugar Swirl Stakes. She was on a hard chase going after the Gate to Wire winner and was very game in between to finish second. Maybe she underperformed a little bit last time out, but the home cooking at Laurel is what she wants. She is a big mare. She's going to weigh in at over 1,200 pounds. Seven eighths has been good to her throughout her career. I think the thing last time out, I wonder is, did they go a little bit too quick for her to that half, even on the stretch out and distance that, yes, she was close, but not as close as she was at six furlongs in that start two back at Gulfstream Park. And the waters were deep. I mean, we know the winner, Olivia Darling, was pretty impressive. Bluefield, she'll have to tackle again, who's also her stable mate. But Mary Quite Contrary is a monster down at Gulfstream Park. So she comes up a bit short. I'm not super concerned about it. She did race really well for her first start in the barn. And I personally just feel like horses with Safi, sometimes they take three, four races to really figure it out. And um, she has some upside in here. I could see her making a big step forward. JV on Toledo will be reunited. He's been aboard for the last four victories. The uncoupled stable made of Intrepid Daydreams right next door in the stalls. That's the seven Bluefield. Good second in the inside information, finishing ahead of Intrepid Daydream. Broke from the rail this day, worked out an inside-out closers trip. Olivia Darling just got the jump on her, turning for home, but she's kicking on for second. Yeah, she is kicking on, and she's making up some ground here at what was a decent price, I thought, in this race. And for her, it was a big step forward. I know maybe not from a numbers perspective, but she seemed to love the added ground compared to that effort two starts back at the six for a long distance. And I know we both know this horse really well, no stranger to Laurel Park, although it's been a while since we've seen her here. I could just see, you know, anything closer. I think that last race would probably put her back in the winner's circle on that return to Maryland. The Michael Trombetta Barnes showing signs of heating up. They'll send out the eight. Continental Congress, who was off the board last time out in a second level allowance race. Maybe three quarters at this point's a little bit short for her. I don't mind her getting back to seven. Seven and a one turn mile might be her best distance right now. Yeah, I certainly think so. And I think the big thing with her too is she's going to be pretty forward, I believe. I mean, I could see her maybe being second or third early on. And last time out going six furlongs, they they ran her a little bit off her feet where the added ground will help her in that regard. But, um, you know, two starts back when she won it, uh, or it was second at the mile distance, 
she set some leisurely fractions for her. Um, so we'll see what she can do here. I do think she's another one that's going to need to prove herself. Her stakes efforts, one was okay. When you go down the page and you look at some of them, the other, not so much. But at least she can be a factor up front early on. Beneath the stars, the number nine was the beaten favorite last time out in a high level allowance, but I'm not going to hold that race against her. I just think she's miles better on fast going than she is on any track with some moisture on it. Lacey Gaudette Barn has just been on fire the last three or four months. This is a step up in class. They're taking a shot with Beneath the Stars, but she does have some tactical speed and a couple of interesting races, two and three back. When you talk about Lacey Godet, I really respect the work that she does, and I think she takes the time with the horses when they need them. So off such a dull effort, this mare went to the shelf, and I think that's a good thing. It's going to be her first start now as a newly turned five-year-old mare, and um, you know her number really dramatically decreased off that 84. She went down to a 58, and to me, at her best, you'll see her. She can pop some really big races, and if that were to happen... Um, you know, maybe you can use her in the exotics. I think from a trip perspective and in the distance, you know, I think that's the big thing with this field. A lot of horses, at least on paper, they should like seven A's compared to what they've seen recently. So her big factor will just be if she's ready to roll against this group off the layoff. Before we take a look at our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time for our race of the day. It's the Barber Fritchie. It's one of four stakes races, two graded at Laurel on Saturday. Bluefield's last race indicates to me she's ready to win a big one, and I think they found a really good spot for her on Saturday. I think so, too. I think this is the perfect spot. Returning to Laurel, she's familiar with the surface. And um, to me, two of her last three, they've both been at the 7 ace distance. They've been really good performances. So um, I don't think it's a shock here that we both went with Bluefield. I think you're going to get some value, though, in your exacto with the one last leaf. This is a horse that always seems to show up. I am never want to disrespect a butchery trained horse at Laurel, especially one with speed. And Disco Ebo at least will be right there turning into the stretch. So same super, different order. 7146 for Ashley, 7461 for me, and the grade three Barbara Fritchie at Laurel on Saturday. Best of luck.